Let me now give you and move to a very practical, shining uh, example uh, of the Islamic history. And that's what is known as Al-Uhda al umariya or uh, the Assurance and the Treaty of Omar. Uh, may Allah be pleased uh, with him. As we, we understand that and we read in history how is it when Muslims entered uh, Jerusalem in Palestine around the year 637 uh, AD, Umar ibn al-Khattab II of the rightly guided caliphs, may Allah be pleased uh, with them all, he was given a tour around the city uh, of uh, Jerusalem, including the church of the Holy Sepulchre. And when the time for the prayer uh, came, uh, the, patriarch, the patriarch of uh, the city, uh, uh, Sophronius, uh, he invited uh, Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, to pray inside uh, that church. However, Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, refused. And the reason for uh, his uh, refusal was clearly that praying inside that church would render some Muslims to later think that this is uh, an excuse for uh, transforming the church into a mosque. And this is why Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, he uh, decided to pray and to perform the salah outside uh, the, the church where a mosque uh, called Masjid Omar or the mosque of Omar was later uh, built. So in addition to this, and uh, and, it, and also clearly see this in the books of history, as was the case with all the lands that, and the countries that Muslims entered, uh, the Muslims concluded a, a treaty that detailed the rights and privileges regarding uh, the, all the people, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims, and uh, this was uh, evidently in uh, Jerusalem. And this treaty was uh, signed by Omar, may Allah be pleased uh, with him, and also uh, Patriarch uh, Sophronius, along with uh, some of the generals of the Muslim uh, army. And the text of uh, this treaty reads, in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most compassionate. This is the assurance of safety, which the servant of Allah, Omar, the commander of the faithful has given to the people of Jerusalem. He has given them an assurance of safety for themselves, for their property, their churches, their crosses, the sick and the healthy of the city, and for all the rituals which belong to their faith tradition. Their churches will not be inhabited by Muslims and will not be destroyed. Neither they, nor the land on which they stand, nor their crosses, nor their property will be damaged. They will not be forcefully converted into Islam. And we read this in Tariq al-Tabari. So all this stands as a clear evidence of how Islam clearly respects the right of all human beings uh, to have uh, access to safe places of worship and to maintain the safety of all worshippers ir irrespective of what they believe. And these are just few examples that show uh, the right uh, of each and every human being uh, to have uh, a safe uh, place of worship and maintaining their uh, safety. Uh, I hope that with this uh, I have provided uh, a clear and a sufficient uh, answer to our uh, dear questioner. This brings us to the end of uh, this episode. I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wishing you all the best. As always, all your questions, feedback and comments are most welcome via the official Facebook page of the program and the rest of the social media. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.